It's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer today. We've got a beer from Broughton Ales and it's a bottle of their proper IPA. Described as citrus and hoppy. Coming in at 5% ABV. If you're watching in America, you might be watching this thinking, proper IPA, that's 6%. But they brewed it at 5 Let's give it a review. Nice smoke on the opening. Beer in the glass. It's a nice colour. It's a nice bright orange, kind of bronze colour. Clarity is great. Nice levels of carbonation. It's probably a two to three finger, slightly off white head. I was quite rigorous with the pour. So I think if you were a little bit more careful, you'd have a nice kind of two finger head. Aroma then on the beer. And they mentioned on the back of the label that there's a big element of toffee. They wanted a big kind of malty toffee backbone. And that is certainly what I'm picking up. Along with a smack of American hops. The hops used in the beer. Uh, Amarillo. Cascade and Chinook. So it's quite a big... Hop profile, three nice big juicy American style hops or American hops. It smells like it's going to be a bit of a battle in terms of bitterness and sweetness. So great, great, lovely kind of balance to the beer. Let's dive in and check it out. Cheers. Wow, stone the crows, that's bitter. That is really bitter. Wow, broad nails, you've kind of blown me away a little bit with this one. You got lemon up front, big. Pungent, big, juicy lemon peel. It's like, it's exactly like, not that I do it too often, of course, biting into lemon peel. You imagine that that citrus attack on your, on your mouth and tongue if you were to bite into lemon peel. And even juicy, fleshy lemon. It's that from start to finish. But it's a lovely, longing, lasting bitterness that hits a nice level and just stays. And then it kind of tails off slowly on your palate. As I'm talking, I'm still kind of being hit with that bitterness. A good 30 seconds after the taste. But that multi body is there. That big, toasty, slightly chocolatey, bit of toffee, toastiness is there just to rein the hops back a little bit. Just to hold it all back, hold it all together and give the beard a little bit of balance. Boy, what a nice, really nice grapefruity brew. There is a little bit of peach, a little bit of mango. But it's slight. 
this is full on acidy kind of vitamin C flavours of of lemon, grapefruit, maybe even a bit of lime, then really intense, intense hoppy, citrusy, vitamin C fruits. Not the mild stuff, the big bitter lemons. Really good. Nice levels of carbonation, so that helps to kind of push the beer around the inside of the mouth. But if you come across this beer by accident, this beer review on YouTube, and you're wondering about all these lemony flavours that I'm talking about, these grapefruity flavours, it's not that the brewer has added lemon, or they've added grapefruit, or, or orange peel, or lime, nothing at all. This is, this is, this is American hops at their very best. This is one of the main ingredients for the beer. They use for the beer for bittering over time. Um, if you've obviously heard of Best Bitters, if you're watching from the UK, um, over time, during World War One, during World War Two, the the amount of hops used in these beers was rained back due to rationing. Um, so they use a little bit more malt, and then they become malty beers. So it just didn't make sense. The 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the early 2000s, people were drinking best bitters in this country and they weren't bitter at all. They were like a malty stew of a beer. Now, don't get me wrong, I still like these beers. I love when a, a good best bitter is brewed properly and, and it's big and it's biscuity and it's bready and it's almost chewy with malt. But it just didn't make sense back then. It never did. I often thought to myself, what is, and I was only young, mind, so, so it wasn't as if I was reading beer books. And I just wondered, whenever I was in the pub with my dad or I was out on my own, and I'd see Best Bitter. Even at that young age, I was expecting the beer to be bitter, but it just wasn't bitter at all. So now the rationing's gone away, the, 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 these, these, Best bitters are now probably in big decline, and you have brewers like Broughton and Brewdog and, and Stone in America and all these great breweries around the world putting the hops back into the beers and, and really giving them some, some miles per hour, really some kind of loads of pardon me, big, tasty, juicy flavours. So, the hops are where we're getting these lovely flavours from. Not grapefruit, lemon, lime, etc., etc. So with that, um, if you, like I say, if you caught the beer review, now you're kind of interested. Now you want to know a little bit more. Um, so go out and try some hoppy beers. It's almost a a buttery, caramelly, toffee flavour. In this beer and I've had one of the other IPAs before and that was quite close in terms of that kind of bready toffee almost butteriness and I suppose to the untrained palate or to somebody who's drunk maybe a beer with diacetol in where that is an off flavour in the beer it's kind of a, a nasty buttery flavour this isn't it this is flavour, this is pure flavour, pure good flavour, but it kind of runs quite close. It's only that I've drunk over 1800 beers that I know for sure that it's not diacetyl. So if you buy this beer and you drink this beer and you've tasted diacetyl before, trust me on this, it's not diacetyl. It's, it's flavour, but it kind of runs close. So it's a bready, biscuity, slightly buttery, but slightly kind of caramel toffee flavours in there that runs quite close. But ignore that, it's not the nasty diacetyl, it's just the, the flavour in the beer. From the malt, of course. 
Right, rating for Broughton proper IPA, 5% ABV. I think it's a damn good IPA. Probably could have, if, I suppose it's tough because it's a balance. I think they've gone with balance all round with this beer. Um, in America, they like to call it I, the IPA 6% and over. In the UK, what I was talking about earlier, the best bitters and the IPAs, they were they got down to 3.5%. So there's a little bit of confusion at the moment. There's a little bit of doubt, I suppose, with, with, with people who are trying all these different styles. Where does the IPA sit? And I think where I'm happy with it sitting is 6% and above. That's where I, I'm kind of happy with my, what I would call an IPA. I'd call this an extremely hoppy pale ale, um, me personally. But of course, if you've been drinking 3.5% IPAs and then you jump on this 5% IPA with loads of flavour, then, then it doesn't really matter, does it? it? It just, it means that you're drinking a damn good beer. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. It's a very solid beer. It's a very good beer. I would definitely buy it again. Um, put your comments in the comments box. Thanks to Broughton Ales for sending. Please subscribe to our daily beer reviews. And cheers.